Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Euro 2020 warm up. We are warming up for another huge day of the third and final round of the group stages of the Euros. We've got a huge show, as always, and some massive games to take you through the night. Uh, but for tonight, the, um, the massive show starts in Rome. We're going to chat to Adriano Del Monte. Might be a little bit smug after what Italy did. Of course, Euro to the max, and Andy Mitten as well. We're going to have you covered absolutely everywhere. And a little treat from Melbourne as well, which we like to do and really talk about the Aussie culture and European side of things. Claude, good evening to you. Good evening, Mel. Congratulations, Thank because you. things clearly could not have gone any better for Italy so far. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was a huge result for the Italians, but we have a jam-packed show. You mentioned all the people we have on the show. We also have four live matches to look forward to, and as always, we have a poll to get you guys involved straight away. Tonight's poll is what is the biggest underdog victory in Euro history? Is it Denmark 1992 or Greece 2004? Get involved and let us know. So far, Greece is winning. Got Lots of Greeks Greece. down here. Yeah, well, well, they were both big. No, they were big. Maybe it's just it's fresher in the memory. But. I just thought, given that Denmark are in action tonight, they shouldn't have even been in that tournament in 92, but, you know, so many Greeks down under, and I'm not surprised <laughs> that they're winning. <laughs> we'll see. Already it's a red-hot debate, isn't it? It is, it is. Now, we do have some, in all seriousness, some breaking news, and this is a big one. The wonder kid, if you like, 20-year-old 20, 20 Billy Gilmore. He starred for Scotland. He's tested positive for COVID and will miss... The match against Croatia, which is a huge blow. That one back in Scotland at Hampden Park. He will be self-isolating uh, for 10 days. This is after um, a conversation with, the Engl with England as well. So, you know, I, I guess they've had protocols in place. It's, you know, it's not great news. Yes. And not great news for Scotland as well. But hopefully we don't hear any more positive tests. It's devastating considering after that man of the match performance in his yeah. debut, everyone was looking forward to see more of Billy Gilmore. Unfortunately, we won't. But hopefully they go deep enough that maybe he'll be back. That wasn't the only exclusion we heard about. We also heard about Usman Dembele who limped off in France's most recent match. Uh, he suffered a knee injury and France have had to release him from the squad immediately. So we wish him a speedy recovery and what a great player he is. Yeah, he is and we certainly do wish him well. Um, France obviously jam-packed with our quality. Um, so yeah, hopefully speedy recovery, but France are still in pretty good nick, I reckon. Speaking of good nick, Italy and Group A, let's look at the table uh, for them. It's all done and dusted and sorted. We Well, for the top two, we know what's happening. Mm, yeah, no, definitely. What a result that is, Italy. I mean, we expect them to do OK, but not this well. They won all their games. Seven goals scored, zero conceded. Wales will be pretty happy with themselves. They locked up second place. And for Switzerland, they had a massive win against Turkey overnight, which means they got four points in third spot. Pretty good chance of sneaking through as one of the best thirds. Yeah, well, a bit of a nervous weight, you'd think. But uh, one team that was, um, I think, partying, not too heavily, of course, but into the night, and deservedly so. The Italians, this is them outside the team hotel, just really enjoying life. <laughs> You're right, you said to me off air before, they look drunk, but they're probably not, they're just Italians. Yeah, yeah. they're just a passionate bunch, we know that. And still si stylish, even though they're a bit dishevelled. Always stylish. What is with that? Yeah, just some, some magic there. Yeah, they're singing a song called Notti Magiche, Magic Nights. It's from Italia 1990, the World Cup. Yeah. So a bit, of a, a bit of a throwback there for the Italians. Just beautiful. One man who might have been right in the thick of it. I'm not sh too sure. As mentioned, we're going to go to Rome and speak to Adriano Del Monte, who's um, keeping a bit of a low profile at the moment. Looks nice and cruisy there, what, at a local cafe, just taking it easy. Adriano, congratulations. Things could not have gone much better for Italy and with a raft of changes. So pretty much a B team got the job done. Well, absolutely, Mel. We are very relaxed the morning after a successful group stage here in Rome on a very, very humid day, but a lot of positivity about this Italian national team. And look, surprising, I guess, I don't think anyone had expected that two and a half years ago when Mancini took over, or three years ago, that this Italian national team would come into this tournament in such form and then to continue it here in the finals. It's truly quite remarkable. And the scenes last night just showed what Paolo and I discussed yesterday at the pitch. The, the unity between the players in this team, those that play, those that don't feature so regularly, it's really alive and well. And that's a, a large factor as to what Mancini has been able to bring into this national team and why today everyone is so relaxed and enjoying the fact that now we're well, one eye on the Austria-Ukraine match tonight because, of course, the winner of that match will take on Italy at Wembley in the round of 16. And they're dreaming big. There's talk about semis in the final to come, despite we're just entering the round of 16. It's exciting times for the Italians, Adriano. My favourite quote of the day was from Giorgio Chiellini when he was asked about all these changes to the lineup. He said, you can change the actors, but the script stays the same. Out of all these new faces, Adriano, who was the most impressive? 
Well, he's spot on, isn't he? And again, this isn't an Italian team full of star power. Think back to the 2006 World Cup winning Italian team. There were a number of iconic legends that were in that squad. But last night, for me, it has to be the story of Pessina, of course, the, the Atalanta man who was an injury replacement player. Many actually were disappointed when he was initially left out of the squad. But him being brought in at the last minute for one of the injured players who unfortunately had to make way. And the fact that he was able to score. You saw in the celebrations last night, ran straight to the technical area, straight to Mancini and the coaching staff. And he was overjoyed, a player who wasn't supposed to be there, to score, to secure Italy's passage through to the round of 16 as group winners. A special night for he. And proves Keel in his quote, doesn't matter who features, they're all capable of stepping up and delivering. Yeah, and Adriano, another clean sheet for Italy. The story just gets better and better. But what about for Wales? They went down, but just narrowly, and are held on to that goal difference to secure a second spot. And a lot of people saying it's probably one of the better losses you could have for what, what, what was riding on it. Well, it certainly wasn't the most exciting game I've ever seen, but for Wales, you're absolutely right, Mel. This was a team that came in, many, including myself, predicted they would finish bottom of this group, but yet again at a European Championships, they've defied the odds, and they go through as runners-up, and if you look at how the draw shapes up, it's not the it's not the toughest quarter of the draw, so who knows? We have seen glimpses of brilliant football from the, the Welsh national team, obviously with Gareth Bale in the lineup. Anything is possible, just despite the fact he hasn't scored for some time, but well done to Wales to emerge from a difficult group where, of course, they had to travel between Rome and Baku. No mean feat. So congratulations to them. But certainly here all the talk is about Italy and, and the path <laughs> to the final, where it could take them. And they're dreaming big, as I said. So I'll just repeat that one more time. <laughs> Very good reason to dream big as well. We'll leave it there. Uh, enjoy the coffee. We'll chat to you again soon. Time to just get a bit of rest and recover, I think. And we've got to say Switzerland and Turkey, some spectacular goals in that one. How good was it to see Jordan Shakiri do his thing, the little magician, the nugget. He's got the best quads in the whole Euro and he Biggest. puts them to good use, scored two cracking goals for Switzerland. They're in a good shout of going through. All-time leading goal scorer now for Switzerland. Let's have a look. We've got to move on now to Group B and how mm. things stand. This one is an interesting one. Mm, it's a beautiful group because it's all to play for still. Yes, Belgium are top, but they're not secure yet. Russia, Finland, Denmark, literally anyone can finish second. Denmark have zero points, but if they win and Belgium beat Finland, they can still sneak in second place. This is an incredible group in action tonight. All right, with that in mind, it's time for Euro to the Max. Let's go to Max Rushton in London. I think it's still a little bit grey. Max, we're talking about this group, and if people are saying, what's there to look forward to? Well, exactly that. Everything's riding on these games. Uh, yeah, you say a little bit grey. It is absolutely... The weather is terrible. Of course we'd not be on a bridge if the weather was good. You will have noticed by now that I only have four friends and on today's <laughs> rotation it's Lars Sivertsen. But that is useful today because he is a Nordic man and we've got Nordic countries, we've got Finland and we've got Denmark today. Let, let's sort of go top to bottom, shall we? Belgium, how, how good are Belgium? They're great going forward and they've got an old rickety defence. Yeah, I feel like we've learned nothing about Belgium so far <laughs> in this round. Because, again, this is the team that, in qualifying, averaged four goals per game. But they didn't play against anyone good, so we didn't know if we could really trust that. And that's kind of been the same thing. Perhaps slightly alarming how many shots they conceded against Denmark. Denmark really battered them in that first half. But then they brought on Kevin De Bruyne, and, and he was just terrifying. He was so good when he came on. So I feel like we're still stuck with this. They have individual class to cause trouble against anyone. But I still don't really trust their defense. And that's where we were at with them before the tournament. So I feel we've learned nothing, Max. We've okay, nothing. we've learned nothing about Belgium. <laughs> yeah. We've taught you nothing no. about Belgium. No, Have we learned anything about Finland? I mean, what sort of achievement? If they did get through, yeah. what sort of achievement would that be? So the circumstances of the first game is strange, obviously. But I thought they were slightly unfortunate not to get anything from the Russia game. Uh, and I think what we've seen from them over three games is this is, sure, player for player, on paper, their CV, the clubs they play for, whatever, probably the weakest squad in the tournament. I think that's true. I don't think they'd argue too much. But we've seen a team that can compensate by, by with hard work, by togetherness, by being you know tactically savvy. And they've put themselves in a position where they have a chance of going through, which I don't think anyone thought going into the tournament. And... Uh, I don't think they will, but, but they have a chance, which is a huge thing for them. Uh, Russia, 
Uh, Russia, what, what, do, what do we know? They've got I mean, Juba up front. I love a big man up front. Yeah, and, and he's a classic big man yeah. who's very strong. Uh, he's does, very big. Doesn't, I mean, mind really big. doesn't mind throwing a shoulder, doesn't mind throwing an elbow, you know, as a centre half. You, you don't look forward to playing him. He'll, he'll smash a nose here and there. And they've got two sort of Golovin and Mirantruk playing off him who on their day are good technical playmakers. But I do find it slightly hard to get excited about this team. And on paper, player for player, they should be quite a lot better than Finland. And I didn't think they were when they played. I no. thought the Finns really held out very well in that game. So I expect Denmark. I mean, Denmark, after everyone had played two games in this tournament, Denmark had had more shots and more attempted crosses than anyone. Uh, yet no points. Uh, so I feel like it'd be really grossly unfair if they go out, and I'm expecting them to get something against Russia, yeah. And, and like emotionally, I hope you can hear us beyond the, the drill behind us, just adding to the summer vibe of London. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> it, it would be, I think everybody is supporting Denmark in a way, after what happened yeah. Christian Eriksen, aren't they? I, 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 th I think in a way they are, and I think, again, adding to the harshness, they were also billed as dark horses going into the tournament for a reason. They have a lot of qualities. Obviously, the horrific circumstances of their first game is not worth going over again but we all know what happened there and then playing so well against Belgium and not getting anything out of it in the end it feels very harsh their issue is still I think lack of cutting edge if you look at their forwards there's no one there do you think oh yeah he'll score 20 goals for you in a club season you know they lack someone like that which is why it stands to reason that they've had all these shots but not not many of them have gone in but you think they would have enough and also we're talking about they're playing Russia we're talking about the strengths that Russia have they have a big target man up front well you know the Danish center halves are quite tasty yeah. in a physical battle that I don't think worries them too much I think they'd be much more worried if Russia had like a super fast guy up there Cheers, Lars, and I'm glad, Claude, you did the permutations because five minutes before we came on, we were like, is it head-to-head? -head? Is it goal difference? Can we not just wait until all the games are finished and then once the last 16 is there, we'll tell you who's through because it's too difficult for us. <laughs> I agree with you. His brain, he's across all of it. Yeah, he's a very clever kid. Thank you very much, Lars. And Max, uh, yeah, I'm glad you've got it sorted because none of us do. I just look like I got it sorted. I've got no idea that I'm just doing a good <laughs> job of making it right show. now. Yes. Euros. Yes. <laughs> all right, let's go. Well, on the way to the break, I think it's that time of the night that we ask, where's Ollie? Hey, guys, time for another Where's Ollie? And today I'm in the fantastic... Sloan Square in London, but as you can see, uh, London summer has disappeared, so there's absolutely no one around right now. So my plan is today, is I'm gonna have some brekkie, have a coffee, and then I'm gonna go to Docklands Canary Wharf area where it's, you know, supposedly there's some fantastic activities uh, along the Thames, which will be fantastic. But then I'm gonna turn my attention to the Belgium Beer Cafe this evening for, of course, Belgium's game, which should be electric. So I'm very much looking forward to that. But right now I'm going to get out of the rain, try and get dry, because this summer, What's happening to all my guys on social? I've been seeing the comments flying in and I love tonight because I don't even have to get involved. You guys are doing the conversation yourself and a lot of it is about Italy. Love this one. Kira Koz says, Optus Sport, how would you compare the Italy team to the World Cup winning side of 2006? And I was looking down at that and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know how I'm even going to answer that. But you guys are doing it for me. Simon's jumped in. He says, remarkable thing is that Italy in 2006 was old school defensive, but this new Italy plays more up-to-date football. That's pretty good to see, and I think both teams are brilliant sides. I don't know if they're at the point where we can compare them to a World Cup winning team. Anyways, guys, I'm going to give you this cheeky one. Looking forward to tomorrow night. Scotland against Czech Republic. Let's see what two Scottish legends have to say about it. So, okay, let's look forward to huge game yes. for Scotland. We're going to be there at Hampden Park. Again, I'm really excited about this yeah, one. How do, you think, how do you think they're going to go? They've got a chance, don't they, Scotland? Look, if, if they've got a great chance. Um, if they all pull up fit then for me I can't see any reason why you would change the starting 11 I thought it was a wonderful performance Steve Clark um, can be at times quite conservative which I, I think Scotland were in the first game but what, what they've shown in, uh, in the, the game against England is what they'll need to deliver call me mad but I kind of think a little bit about Australia here as well in terms of 2006 World Cup our last group game was against Croatia after a long time out of international football. I remember it. I remember <clears> it so well as well Maureen. Yeah Scotland long time out of international football their last group game is against Croatia. Um, 
I'm passionate about Scotland doing well as well. Born Aussie, obviously, but a lot of great memories here in Scotland. So it's just similarities, I think, for this game. But they've got a great chance. What do you think of Lyndon Dykes? How do you think he's <coughs> slotted in? Lyndon's done well. He's done really well since he's come into the national team. He leads the line well. He, he, he does occupy central defenders. Um, obviously decent in the air, physical. He needed the support of Shea Adams, though. Uh, he needs another body up there. I think leading the line uh, by yourself is too hard a job. I thought he looked quite good the other night. Did yeah. he know that he shaved his head because he didn't want to look like Gaza at Wembley? You know how he had his blonde uh, he, he hair had, in the first yeah, game? Because yeah. I was wondering, I'm like, what's he done to his hair? Yeah, but the big man, he, he likes to do a few different things with it. He, you know, you look you look through Lyndon Dyke's time, he's, he's changed haircuts, he's um, he's not afraid to do that. Um, he, well, he had Foden trying to look like Gascoigne. Uh, <laughs> and, and Lyndon Dyke's trying to not look like him, obviously being Scottish. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love it. Hey guys, and just a quick poll update for you before we go back. Greece winning 75% after 150 votes. How good is that? Could be another underdog story on the way. We'll catch you soon. Welcome back to the warm-up. Now, Claudes, we've talked about Group B and how it's it's very scary. Mm -hmm. Everything to play for tonight. Group C, it's not quite that, but still a lot riding on second place. Explain, please. Still a lot going on here. Netherlands already wrapped up first place. North Macedonia are already eliminated. But this game in the middle, Ukraine take on Austria. If Ukraine win or draw, they've locked in second place. But Austria, if they beat them tonight, they'll leapfrog them into second. So that is going to be a fiery one. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, you mentioned... The Dutch, they certainly got the job done so far so good and they look pretty chilled out, out and about as well. Again, we have a bicycle theme. They just like, we know that this is the norm in uh, Europe anyway, but uh, look at these guys just taking it. Oh, don't do it, Ronaldo, don't do it. Don't Surely do it. the coach is I'm, watching that. I'm scared, that. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> make me scared. This is a bit more like it. What could possibly go, oh, oh I don't know. Uh, competitive. A bit of sting pong there. I wonder how much of that they play footballers. You know what? They're known to be so competitive that apparently they go crazy over ping pong. They need to win. Do you know the England team invited the media in and each, including Gareth Southgate, they all take on a member of the media and yeah. Southgate won. Did he really? I don't know who it was up against, but this um, is winning something. Good bit of revenge. <laughs> anyway, and were, yeah, oh, oh, come on. Don't be, <laughs> oh, come don't on. be cocky yet, okay? Um, I was going to say there's room for everyone, but there isn't. Let's stay on the Dutch theme, shall we? Let's go to Amsterdam. Normally, Andy Mitten is out and, about, out and about in the sunshine, but I think he's indoors for a very good reason, Andy. I've been on the road for 10 days covering this tournament, and this is the first day where there hasn't been bright sunshine. It's really miserable, wet and windy in Amsterdam. I'm here ahead of Holland against North Macedonia. The Dutch team have surprised the Dutch. They've won their first two matches. This is their first major tournament in seven years and they've been pleasantly surprised in Amsterdam itself. There's not a huge amount of evidence of the competition going on and some of the restrictions mean that bars have had to close halfway through the opening games but those restrictions are being lifted. Uh, there's conviction that this isn't a bad Dutch team. They've managed not to tear themselves apart internally as in past tournaments and they could make it three out of three and go through. They play North Macedonia, who for them, it's been an achievement just to be in this competition. It's the smallest nation in the European Championships, just two million people. It could be Pandev, their great striker's last ever game. And they've not been humiliated. They've played well and they're absolutely proud to see themselves competing on the international stage. The other game today in this group features Austria and Ukraine. They've both got three points each because they both beat North Macedonia. So they'll be going out to win it. Both could still end up qualifying because the way this tournament is. But here in Amsterdam today, it's all about the Dutch national team. People here want to see a bit more from Memphis Depay. They're looking to him to be a star player, to lead their team, to show that he's got the quality. He's just about to move to Barcelona from Olympic Lyon. To show that he's got the quality to come up and perform when Holland get through and play against one of the strongest teams, one of the tournament favourites. And if they can do that, then Holland will be considered the same themselves. Thank you, Andy. Great stuff. And yeah, Depay to Barcelona, that's big news. Massive news. Yeah. He joined Sergio Aguero and Lionel Messi in that attack. They are looking really stacked.
Yeah, scary stuff indeed. Now, uh, we mentioned we love going to Melbourne to just check out what on earth is going on. Dave Davidovich is normally right in the thick of it. I think today is no different. Dave, good evening to you. Obviously, I'm going to ask you where on earth you are in Melbourne, but also specifically, I think you might have, I don't know if the fame's gone to your head because something's happened as a result of these crosses, correct? Yeah, we've gone viral, Mel. Uh, we're at the <laughs> Macedonian Old House restaurant here in Thomastown and Look, Mel, I know you've had an illustrious TV career, etc., but have you ever made the front page of the Australian Macedonian Weekly? Ah, uh, sadly, no. But it's something to aim for. No. Right Dave, congratulations. Well, I have, I'm, Mel. I'll never be as credible as you. Look, you're so famous. What's it say? Thank you very much. I've actually got no idea what it says. I presume it's, uh, <laughs> it's positive, but uh, it's off the back of our visit to the Geelong Soccer Club. Uh, last week thursday all my days are getting mixed up to be honest but uh, we had a, a fantastic night the hospitality was unbelievable um, and on a serious note uh, thank you to the club uh, and the macedonian community for uh, for hosting us and the australian macedonian weekly of course and uh, we're here uh, in thomastown uh, very close to the preston lions football club a really famous club in australian football in the national soccer league and uh, now working their way up through the divisions as we uh, we saw and we featured them in the uh, the Football Belong series. So I'll just bring you along to give you a bit of a taste of what's happening tonight, Mel and Claude's. And uh, here we go with a couple of uh, Preston Lions heavyweights. Uh, mm -hmm. One uh, face that uh, you, uh, you you should uh, remember from the FFA Cup, Lou Achevsky, former National League player and uh, senior coach of Preston Lions. How are you, Lou? I'm really good, Dave. How are you? Fantastic, mate. Uh, what do we have on the menu tonight? Um, we've got a bit of everything here. Good old... Um Macedonian culture. Uh, we've got a bit of a, a shopska salata here. Um, I've got the waiter just here, just ready. Here we go. Have a, a, a look at that. Look at that, Dave. Have a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> bit of Is a, this the sauska? Sauska meso. Yeah. No, it's not really, but it's a mi bit of a mixed oh. grill. English mixed grill, but it is a Macedonian uh, uh, a food that we've obviously got the Macedonian sausages, the, the kebapi, the pliskavici, the chicken, the whole lot here, Dave. Fantastic. And wash down with the uh, Zlatan Dub, the, uh, the Macedonian beer. Got the Zlatan Dub right here, Dave. And we've got also... The vaccine. We've got the COVID <laughs> vaccine for you right here, Dave. Here we go. This is the rollout tonight. That's the one. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Cheers. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> Zach Gruevsky here, the president of the Preston Lions. You may remember him from Football Belong. Zach, how are you, mate? What does this mean to the community? Uh, look, this is a fantastic opportunity to clear for us to showcase our wonderful Macedonian community here in wow. Melbourne, Victoria. Our proud club, Preston Lions Football Club, as you said, uh, the, uh, the mother club of our, uh, of our wonderful community uh, and the diaspora outside of uh, Macedonia. Beautiful. So we've got the committee members here. Uh, <laughs> over there, we've got the Preston Lions women's team. Give us a wave, ladies. Uh, doing very well. Uh, here we've got some senior players and uh, some committee members also. And some uh, over here, we've got some, some youngsters. <laughs> Give us a wave, kiddos. And uh, obviously, no Zlatan dub here. Here they're drinking Strumka, which is a, uh, a, uh, a soft drink from Macedonia. Now, we've got a special guest with us who, uh, again, you may remember from the Football Belong series, Norm Sekolovsky, who... Uh, is a real staple of the uh, the Macedonian community in Preston Lions. Butka, how are you? Good, mate. What a night. Absolutely, mate. <laughs> you played a starring role in Football Belongs as, you, uh, as your profile just gone through the roof. Uh, absolutely bonkers, mate. Um, <laughs> but here we are. Where else would you rather be? Uh, in uh, industrial Thomastown, waiting for, the, <laughs> waiting for the Macedonian national team uh, to play against uh, the Dutch. Yeah. Can't wait. It's been a tough tournament thus far. Um, what have you made of it? What do you make of the game tonight? Look, um, you've got to take the positives out of it. Valkovsky's uh, done really well. Uh, Stolian goals has been superb. And then the great Goran Pandev uh, scores his goal at, uh, uh, you know, um, on the European stage and uh, has his potentially his final hurrah tonight. So we'll be behind him as we've been behind the whole team the whole way. And I think the guys in the studio are going to ask you for a tip, Normie. Can we... Has, has it... Yep, all right. Oh. Yep, Mel? Great to chat to you, by the way. Um, yeah, we, it's called The Big Call, thanks to our good friends at TAB. It means you can be as big and outrageous as you like. It's up to you. It could be about tonight's game or the tournament, whatever you like.
Cheers, Mel. I will be outrageous. Uh, <laughs> we're going Macedonia, 3-0, with Pandev scoring a hat-trick. Yeah. Boom! Yeah. There we go. Yeah, we he's, love uh, he's convinced by that. He's absolutely convinced by that. Um, now, Normie, I think it's only fair if you, uh, if you take us out tonight with uh, what you call the Tarabuka. Where's the Tarabuka? It might be out the back over there somewhere, guys. <laughs> There we go. Can we start with a Macedonia, 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 Macedonia. There we go, David. All night long. <laughs> I believe it as well. <laughs> Can we just stay on this? <laughs> Passionate here, Mel. Not sure how the result will go, but they are happy to be here. It's their, potentially their last game. Could be a massive upset, who knows? But they're up and about here in Thomastown, Mel. Well done, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Norm. And everyone involved. My, I just I just love wherever he goes and whatever he does. And, and I love hearing from Norm and obviously Perth Glory Days as well. Very old school in that regard. But um, my goodness, the, uh, Norm... I think had a shot or two as well. Yeah, you know, a bit of an audio he looked check. like it. He was wobbling a little bit, but why not? The kids won't. Yeah, it's their last game in the group. It's a huge one. Yes, they're eliminated, but a chance to make history here if they can beat the Dutch. And Goran Pandev, he mentioned he was playing his last game for Macedonia yeah, as well. Yeah, and he's such a hero, isn't he? Yeah, just love hearing from the fans. Very exciting times. North Macedonia taking on the Dutch, playing for, well, for, there's a lot of national pride, isn't there? And then Ukraine taking on Austria to reiterate Plenty riding on that one. Ukraine need to avoid defeat for second and Austria must win if they're going to secure second spot. That is the early game, 2 a.m. Eastern, all the build-up from 1.30 a.m. Eastern. And then onto this group, Russia, Denmark and Finland, Belgium. What are you saying? Well, I'll tell you what, a little fun fact about this. You think Belgium's going to win this game? Here's one for you. Belgium haven't beaten Finland in their last seven matches against them since 1968. It's a bit of a bogey side for them, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Finnish get it done tonight. I was going to say, don't assume I think Belgium. Yeah, I did tip Belgium, so yeah, absolutely right. Well, yeah, interesting stat. Well, if you miss anything in the middle of the night, Jules and Schwartzy, they have you covered in the Euro Brecky wrap. What's coming up, Jules? Thanks, Mel. Well, we'll be going through all four matches. Johnny Aloisi will tell you how and where the games were won and lost. Schwartzy will dissect the plays of the day. Rich Bayliss will have more memorable moments from the Euros. And our biggest celebrity to date will give us their tips. You won't actually believe who it is, so make sure you come and join us. Thanks, Jules. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to see who that celebrity is. I'm so sure it will be absolutely enormous. They've had some big names so far. Rafa Nadal with a suspiciously <laughs> orange beard. But I don't know. That was a couple of days ago. All right. We're off, I think, because we, we need to warm up. I hope you've been warming up ahead of a massive night. It is do or die, the third and final round of the group stages. And then we're into the round of 16. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your football.